In the late 1960s, the Cold War had reached its peak, and Mare Island Naval Shipyard was a central player in our nation's defense. One nuclear submarine after another were being built and commissioned to face the threat posed by the Soviet Union. Vallejo was a Navy town, rightfully taking great pride in the shipyard whose reputation for quality was well known. Despite its sterling reputation, that pride was soon about to take a great blow. In early 1969, the future commanding officer of a nuclear submarine under construction was so concerned about the lack of coordination between nuclear and non-nuclear workforces that he wrote a letter pointing out the need for a central controlling agency to govern construction. In a moment replete with hubris, shipyard representatives responded that the shipyard had been building ships for a long time without the need for such an agency and that no equipment had been damaged and no one had been killed yet. Soon after that, the commanding officer was tragically proven correct in his assessment. Beginning around 4 p.m. in the afternoon, a nuclear test group began an instrument calibration which required the filling of the after ballast tanks of his submarine with five tons of water. Half an hour later, a non-nuclear test group began an assignment to bring the ship within a half degree of trim. This entailed adding water to the forward ballast tanks to overcome a reported two degree up bow attitude. For the next three and a half hours, both groups continued to add water to their respective ends of the boat while unaware of each other. On shore, the changes in Guitaro's trim were so noticeable that at 7 p.m., a security watch advised the non-nuclear group in the bow that water was lapping into an uncovered manhole. Those workers ignored the warning, but they did stop adding water to the forward ballast tanks so they could depart for lunch. Meanwhile, the other nuclear group completed their task and began to empty the aft ballast tanks. This caused the ship to drop down sharply at the bow, creating massive flooding through open hatches. Workers scrambled to close the hatches and the watertight doors within the submarine, but it was too late. The USS Guitaro sank at around 9 p.m. In the days following the sinking, the shipyard rallied to raise the Guitaro while at the same time it was under the heavy scrutiny of a naval court of inquiry and a separate congressional inquiry. The damage to the ship was extensive as her electronics and systems were all compromised by the flood of salt water. Tens of millions of dollars were required to repair the damage delaying the commissioning of the ship by over a year. Some face disciplinary action, but it was the damage to the shipyard's reputation that was most hurtful as the workforce became the butt of jokes. Shipyard workers suffered the ignominy of being awarded the Flying Fickle Finger of Fate Award on the popular TV show Laugh-In, and later that year, an association gave Mare Island their Pop Metal Goose Egg Award. Because of this event, Mare Island instituted many changes in organization and operating procedures, changes that were instituted across all naval shipyards. The USS Guitaro was commissioned in 1972 and went on to serve for 20 years until she was decommissioned at Mare Island following the end of the Cold War. Some contend that the sinking of the Guitaro was the cause of the shipyard's closure in 1996, but that is idle speculation. The fact is, the end of the Cold War combined with short-sighted planning on the part of Congress and the Navy led to the shipyard's closure. However, the sinking of the Guitaro remains to this day as a poignant reminder of the dangers of overconfidence.